3 gives us 53 and it's the square root of this particular value here okay that gives us our standard error and in our case here when we do this we just do this all in one go so what we're going to calculate is we're going to calculate the square root of 6 times 50 times 49 that's our numerator that needs to be divided by 48 times 51 times 53 and I close the bracket off that gives us a standard error of 0 0.3366 to four decimal places so 0 0.3366 to four decimal places so now we can calculate our test statistic the z statistic for skewness the z for our skew is equal to and um, it's equal to the the sample evidence okay it's equal to the skewness associated with our sample and uh, we've already figured that out in a previous video to be equal to it's to be equal to and i'll just put a circle around that here it's to be equal to 0 0.94 so it's positively skewed or i mean it it, it, it seems well it, it's definitely greater than zero which would indicate that this, the distribution the sample distribution so the, the sample that we've looked at is positive skewed but does it deviate enough from zero does it de deviate enough from a symmetric dif distribution and have we any confidence in that particular deviation is really what we're testing here so our sample skewness is 0 0.94 so we have 0 0.94 minus what we believe the skewness is under the null hypothesis which is zero divided by the standard error for this particular for this particular test which the standard error we've calculated to be 0. 0 0.3366 so we end up with a test statistic z of sk is equal to in our case here what we've got we have 0.94 oh it's 0.94 oops 0 0.94 minus 0 just gives us 0 0.94 and has to be divided by 0 0.3366 which gives us a test statistic of approximately 2.7926 so test statistic of 2.7926 two six okay so now that we know our test statistic we can actually go and we can actually proceed to actually calculate the critical values okay so we need to calculate our critical values let's fold this over here so this is step this is step four so step four just to calculate the critical values so step four is our critical values now let's just keep in mind here that our distribution okay our test statistic is a z statistic so we're going to be calculating critical values associated with a z distribution so we're going to have a z distribution okay a z distribution and let's just have a look at our test statistic our test statistic is equal to the sample skewness minus zero all over the standard error so if there was no difference between the sample if the sample was symmetric its skewness should be zero and hence zero minus zero should give a zero and our test statistics should be zero so a z score of zero would be indicative of a distribution that has zero skewness or a distribution that is pure symmetric if that makes sense now what we really need to figure out is is our is our test statistic which is 2.79 it's in it's in the right hand tail here is it far enough away from this particular position this zero which indicates no skewness is it far enough away to be significantly different to it now the test that we're doing yeah is actually a two-tail test because all I need to try to show is if the if it has positive skew or if it has negative skew if it's on the positive side of this particular zero or if it's on the negative side I'll be happy if it's far enough away on the positive side or far enough away on the negative side that would be indicative uh, of a distribution that has skew either positive or negative so actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our significance level and we're gonna put it into we're gonna do a two-tail test here so the question is is what are these values here what are these critical values that have half the significance in the tail so alpha over 2 is going into this tail which is equal to 0 0.025 and alpha over 2 is going into the right hand tail which is also a value of 0 0.025 so based off a normal distribution what z score or what critical value has 0 0.025 of the area to the right hand side so if there's if there's 0 0.025 of the area to the right hand side well then that means to the left hand side of it there must be 0 0.0 sorry 0 0.975 of the area to the left or 0 0.9750 of the area to the left so we can look this up on our on our z tables and i've got a set of z tables here okay 
uh, if I just go to my Z tables, okay, okay, I've got my Z tables here. And what I'm interested in, these are Z tables that give us cumulative